The following podcast contains explicit language. This is the Diesel Performance Podcast, and I'm Paul Wilson. And Scott Henricks. Scott, I'm really excited about today's episode. We have something that I'm really passionate about. I think something that all of our listeners are really passionate about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's basically uh, we're looking at this situation is going to be kind of like a, a fantasy build type of situation given certain criteria. If you want to, you want to kind of lead us into that. Absolutely, yeah. So, so what we thought of was what do you guys talk about the most, and that's budget builds. That's really where the focus is at. So we started off with a fifteen thousand dollar pot. You got 15,000 imaginary dollars, and you need to build a truck that can make 600 horsepower, 1,000 foot-pounds of torque, and run under a 13-second quarter mile. Yep. So we got that. all of that. Um, we wanted to make sure the big three were covered. So we had Power Stroke, Cummins, Duramax as well, and kind of a uh, either an expert and or enthusiast. Yeah, I like that. Right? I like that. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, yeah. so we all can't be experts. So expert enthusiasts for each. Um, the, I mean, we assume that, so $15,000 pot, you present this to a, uh, I guess, the guy with the $15,000 and whoever has the best build or what have you, they would get the money to purchase said truck. Absolutely. Yeah. So so what we want you guys to try as listeners is get together with a group with somebody who has 15 grand cash. Yeah. You're, you're probably sitting right next to you. And whoever comes up with the best budget build for $15,000 gets the money. There you go. Right? That's exactly what, that's exactly what happened, isn't it? <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. But it was definitely, it was a, it was a ton of fun. You want to you wanna roll into that? Let's do it. We've got Pete Shibby. Yes. Yep, and also we are joined by, yeah, yeah, partner in crime, Chris Emke. Chris, how are you doing today? Great. Awesome. And uh, then we've got our very own Paul Wilson. That's right, I'm here. All right, guys. So what? what is, uh, Paul, you want to run me through? What, what, what do we got going on? What are you guys, what are you guys up to? Yeah, Scott, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Uh, Chris is a coworker of mine. We're over at Duramax Tuner, and we know Shibby, of course, from WC Fab. Chris and I got into a... We'll call it conversation the other day about what was the best way to build a a budget build, like a real budget build. Fifteen thousand dollars cash, buy the truck, buy all the mods, install everything, walk home with something that we consider at least a, a respectable street truck. So six hundred horsepower plus, over a thousand foot pounds of torque, and we use drag racing for the baseline here, so it has to run under a thirteen second quarter mile. Okay. All right, so what we'll do then is, with, with those criteria, um, I will be the judge. I guess we'll go through, right, go around the room. You guys let me know what it is you picked. We'll talk about what we're, you know, what your plans are, why your plans are that. The rest of us will tear that plan down as much as we can and just try to make you feel as bad about your decision as, as we possibly can. You guys, stay strong. Who wants to go first? I mean... Let Losers Mr. Hot Gaskets go first. Yeah. Because I'll be seven. Injectors, pump, everything. Rods. I mean, you name it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I Brandon mean, are you Payton. still getting a truck for 15 grand with the cab intact? Or I like, love, what do we got going love, on there? I got a Brandon love, Payton special. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First of all, I love that Chris says this. Chris is the number one person to underestimate the value of anything he is buying and overestimate the value of anything he is selling. But so I prove Chris, every time that it's worth what I pay and it's worth what I get. So it doesn't matter what I over or underestimate. If Chris, I had, make picked, it happen. If Chris had picked LD7 as his truck, he would tell you he could buy one for five grand. Mm-hmm. It's been done. Build the trans for two. It, it's also been done. Find a, find a $500 turbo and turn uh, around and sell it for $20,000. 15 grand, but it's definitely doable. See, see, this is what I'm saying. So, awesome. so what I picked was an O2 LB7. I found it for sale at, down in Kansas City. Uh, $9,200. Fresh injectors. Perfect. Ooh. Just saying. How many miles were on that truck? Uh, there was a number. Okay, so I'm just saying, there's a serious reason no, why. No, I'm no, I, I'm with you. Okay, so it actually was about 180. Okay, that's not bad. Th- that's what Definitely I thought. Definitely lower than I thought. Fresh injectors, has a lift pump, has exhaust intake, boost increase valve, and. That was about it. I mean, he listed 15 other things, but they were basically fully built in Craigslist standards. Yes. Now, yes, exactly. the one the one stipulation that I have with that is you are buying a truck that's already been modified. So not every scenario, not any person listening is going to go on their local Craigslist, let's say, and would, buy that budget truck with, the, uh, cut with the an inject- intake and exhaust. Cut the injectors out of it. The lift pump, 
the exhaust, the intake. I mean, those three components right there are over $1,000. Okay, but how many LB7s do you find that don't have an intake and exhaust already on them? I mean, I can go on Craigslist right now locally and find 10. Okay, but I found one that has it, so I win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, when my truck's done and your truck's done, I'm still walking your ass, so it doesn't we'll really matter. We'll see. Um, okay, first mod, gear and torque converter, triple disc, uh, billet stator, looking 1600 bucks. We sell them. I know that. Suncoast G Max 5.3 kit, 1780. Uh, Stell 64, 1850. Total build cost with parts, $14,430. I know for a fact the truck's going to make over 600 horse, like 605 ish. It'll definitely beat the 1,000 foot pounds of torque. And we've seen them run t- anywhere down to 12.2 up to 12.8. That is, you're 100% correct with that. So, boom, yeah. budget build, mic yeah. drop. No, um, is it, now, how much did the fresh injectors uh, contribute to that horsepower increase? Okay, so so here's the thing on fresh injectors. We all know that every LB7 ever sold on Craigslist says fresh injectors. Okay, there, There's going to be a toss-up. Could that cost you another $4,000? Absolutely. But you're, you're taking it on what it is. I can only go off of the Craigslist ad. Right. I mean, one of the big things, too, is you found like a diamond in the rough. You're not always going to find a truck that has fresh injectors, has those parts on there. If this was a little different, you are honestly going to pay seven, $8,000 for a budget LB7, cut the injectors out of the equation. There's going to be another 1000 to $1,500 there in, in intake, exhaust, you know, cold air, or, um, lift pump, I should say. Well, and the big thing, too, that um, is one thing to throw in factor, too, is the CP3 pump healthy, doesn't need head gaskets. Yeah. I'll touch base when I go over my build on I kind of did it from a different aspect, so I won't say anything about that. No, 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 let's let's hear it. That's perfect. Let's hear it, Chibs. What do you got? All right, so I was given the task of a Ford vehicle, which Ah. is a little more challenging. Um, I I picked a 6-liter out of the big three, 7.3, 6-liter, 6.4. I found cheap 6.4s, but that's a big risk taking buying those. They're easy to make power with, but you could also – easily be 10 grand deep in motor work before you even know it too rough so i spent about 10 minutes on facebook i found a 2004 f350 six liter standard cab locally for 3500 dollars with a wiring harness issue um i had a couple new parts on it it's true i saw that it's white yep so it's got the nice 05 front end oh yeah she was nasty i thought about buying it to flip (laughs) so um you know, I figured into my price of the build just paying asking price for it. That's more than fair. It's a work truck. It's nothing fancy, but it looks pretty decent. Um, I went a little over the top on my two-page list of parts here oh that I've planned God. out for this truck. Look because at you, that. I figured it needs I figured, two pages of parts. I figured buying a cheap truck, buying it as cheap as possible, gives me the most room to make it the most reliable truck for the, for the guy that – maybe isn't going to drive it for a week and resell it. Mm-hmm. He's going to keep it for a couple of years. So I figured buy something cheap. That's more money I can put under the hood. Right. And that's kind of what, you know, I did on mine. Unlike, you know, the third mm-hmm. person in the room. Well, and the big Who benefit right. to a six liter over a six, four is a six liter is a lot more user friendly for the DIY mechanic. He can work on it in his garage. You guys can't see in the video, but I'm showing a picture of Chad Brinkman's six liter with the cab being pulled with ratchet straps. So <laughs> you can do your head gaskets in your garage. You don't have to have a lift. So I guess since we're that not doing... the stupidest idea I have ever seen in a picture. Ever. Hey, man, you'd be surprised what some people do. I've seen forklifts before. Um, so anyways, I kind of went, like I said, over the top with this build. Um, I'll just kind of ramble off the main points of everything. No, let, let's hear it. Give me, give me the full list. <clears throat> okay. I, I'm dropping the truck off to so, you at WC Fab. Well, this is – all these parts listed here are all parts that I picked that are what we would consider drop-in or bolt-on. Nothing custom in terms of, you know, you need to have a welder to put this on. Okay. You need to have these special tools to do this, you know, to crimp that, whatever. This is something you could build in your garage if you've got a, a decent set of tools. Okay. So, I, you know, I figured this is, you know, let's say 18-year-old Brandon got $15,000 from his parents for a truck, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to buy a cheap beater. I want to go fast. So, basically, it's not in any particular order of parts here. So... Basically, what we, in this case, he would tear the truck down, take the cab off, pull the heads off. Heads are going to go to the machine shop. They're going to get tested, um, machine flat, just check all that over. 
ARP head studs, new head gaskets, um, you know, a top end gasket kit, um, all your miscellaneous hardware and stuff that's, you know, non reusable in, right. in safety sake, you know, exhaust manifold bolts, et cetera. Um, fuel filter, oil filter, oil, power steering fluid, coolant, all that stuff. Um, and then we get into more the, I guess, the inside parts, um, you know, doing the EGR delete. This truck's, you know, pre emission standard. It doesn't get tested, so we're fine there. Um, oil cooler rebuild kit, just OEM. Uh, just a cheap four inch MBRP exhaust, 285 bucks. Um, and then we get into the more expensive stuff. Um, I got a stage three barter, um, drop in six liter turbo. So it's basically like a Garrett, like a 3794, uh, drop in charger. That's been extensively modified internally. Um, you know, both turbine and compressor housing machine, larger wheels, veins modified. Um, I mean, that's a $2,500 turbo in itself. Um, the injector modifications, you know, I went with a 190, 100 setup. I know that setup is good for 625 plus on the dyno on the right truck. Um, I mean, 1249 for that. Um, regulated return kit. Anytime you go big injectors like that, you got a regulated return for the fuel pressure. Um, you know, it gets a little <clears throat> when you're running, you know, just the factory fuel bowl style return. Um, when you're running large injectors like that, your fuel pressure can bounce anywhere from you know, 30 to 80 PSI in the middle right. of a run and you want to keep it consistent. Um, <clears throat> got a diesel site, adrenaline modified high pressure oil pump, thousand bucks there, uh, 400 bucks for an SCT programmer, 150 for a set of three custom tunes. I got valve springs. I got push rods. I got an edge CTS two on here with an EGT probe, um, SMB cold air intake. Um, the original problem with the truck was an engine wiring harness. I contacted a guy on Craigslist actually that was parting out a six liter. He said $150 for a complete harness, truck side and engine side. So there's Bullshit. the, there's the, <laughs> no, Same. that's some good, re I, two points for I research. Mean, I mean, do you, <laughs> do you want me to cite sources here? Good stuff. I mean, oh, don't worry. I did. That's a list. I got links. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Paul, I man, where's your paperwork at? I got it. I got it. I'll email it to you. <laughs> he is so full of shit. Get out of here. <laughs> um, I figured about 250 bucks in shipping for all the parts, you know, getting shipped to the guy's house. You know, I mean, it's not. It's give or take. I yeah. Gotcha. You know, rough range. Um, outside of that. Oh, and the other thing I have on there, too, is a, um, I got a stage two performance intake manifold on there, too. Had a little bit of money left over. So those are 800 bucks. So I figured, oh, why not, you know, spend every bit of the 15000 given and truly make the truck a runner and just PCV reroute and all the basic stuff. And then the last thing is that was an early 04 truck, so it has the desirable factory turbo to the guys with the 05 to 07 trucks. Guaranteed get at least 300 bucks out of that. So I put a $300 deduction on there. So. <laughs> you cheap bastard. So in parts... With seven hundred and seven dollars and thirteen cents in tax, if I bought it all locally through a shop, you know, okay. just down the street from me or something, it brings my parts total to eleven forty eight four hundred and eighty one dollars and twenty three cents. And then if with the price of the truck at thirty five hundred bucks, that brings the total bill to fourteen nine eighty one twenty three. So, and that's, you know, you research that exact setup online, you call anyone, that's a guaranteed 600 horse minimum setup, you know, 625, 650s in the picture, that stage three turbo is a 68 millimeter, just like a fleece cheetah. So we know those are capable of some serious power. Do you want um, me to tell you how you disqualified your truck from the running? Tell me. You said it would be reliable and you said it was a six liter Ford. In the same sentence. So well, done. I mean, if you're you take out. a look at this parts list here, I mean, pretty much everything's <laughs> covered. Unlike your LV7, that's going to blow the head gaskets tomorrow. Wait, he bought it already modified. It's good to go. The guy oh, said yeah, it's The guy built. said so. Hey, the you guy know said it's got good injectors. Yeah. I, I trust people. I'm a trusting person. Um, <laughs> I have to work next to him. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> and then I guess I wanted to touch base a little bit more on for the Ford guys that probably aren't going to listen to this, why I actually chose what's considered to be the worst of the Ford engines. Seven threes are just ridiculously expensive to make horsepower with. Yeah, you'll you know, never you, get there. You need to switch to a T4 style turbo to make anything out of them. So then you've got, you know, not only an S400 charger, probably a custom specified charger for that truck, right. plus the whole install kit. Um, you know, entire fuel system needs to be addressed on that pump, 
you know, regulated return, just like the six liter, yep. you know, entirely there. Um, it's got a weaker transmission and it's got weaker connecting rods. So 600 right. horse is borrowed time on that truck. If you're wanting reliable, no go. Same thing with the 6.4. They're super easy to make power. Custom tunes at the rear tires, your 560 to 580. So they're, it's really close in itself there. A couple little bolt-ons will get you right over six. The problem is heads, head gaskets, injectors, pumps, turbos, up pipes. Um, I mean, tuning, you've got over $1,000 in just a tuning box for the truck itself. Um, that was actually going to be my first pick. I did a little bit of research. The cheapest truck I found was an 08 extended cab long bed two-wheel drive for 8500 bucks in Indiana. It was like an old DOT truck, 250,000 miles, and the thing was just raggy. Yeah. And I figured it would turn into a serious project just like your LB7. Um, six liters, they're well, flawed from the factory. They're junk. We know this. Um, but they have a really strong transmission in them. The 5R110 is actually just like an Allison, electronically yeah. controlled. Um, 600 horse. If the truck's been beat to hell its whole life, it's not going to last forever, but the transmission will take it. It's not like an Allison where you're going to hit limp mode on your way home from getting tuned here. Um, yeah, so. but, <clears throat> but when it goes, it's fucked. I mean, it's just done. Oh, just like yeah. your head gaskets. Yes. I mean, we're right in the same ballpark you there. Guys keep saying, you guys keep saying head gaskets, but to be honest with you, LB7s, I've seen 50 LB7s come through the shop since January, and I've seen one head gasket job out of them. Like... They're, they're yeah, because they've already been done. They're already. not that bad. Head gaskets really aren't that bad on an LB7 unless you're over 650 horse. That's when you would really start oh, worrying we do about stock them. ones all the time. It's just I think the majority of those trucks have had them replaced already by now. They're I, getting to that. Age. I think that's tough. Beg I think to that's differ. Tough beg to, to differ. Let me finish now. Um, all the pro. Whoa. All the problems I guess with these trucks, I tried to resolve within my build. High pressure oil pump, injectors, et cetera. Um, you know, things like, you know, little sensors and stuff. Obviously, that's part of maintenance. Right. So I tried to cover everything I could. Um, they have a bad reputation, but they're just a blast to drive. Um, I mean, anyone that's driven one, even with just a tune on it, knows that it's a riot. They are and, fun. And you can't beat the sound they make. Um, oh, God, I knew you'd <clears throat> say something about the sound. The big thing, if someone were to do a budget build six liter where 15,000 was actually a limit on it, definitely stick with an 03 or early 04 truck. The 04 and a half to 07 six liters have a much different high pressure oil system and it's a little more expensive to make flow. You need, you need to look into like a high pressure oil, actually like crossover line system, which is another $1,500 on top of, you know, some additional parts that those systems have that the early trucks don't. So I would stick with the 0304, and it's going to whoop up on that LB7. I still question if your regular at-home mechanic can do all of the work you listed. Honestly, I think you're talking about somebody who's an experienced diesel tech that works in a I'm shop. I'm going to agree with Paul on to that. A shop. I don't think your average guy <laughs> at the shop. How many Fords have you seen come in the shop that somebody started the project or completed a project and completely We've screwed the pooch? We've had in the – in the lot. two two years and two months I've been at Worley's, we did one basket case six liter that came in, you know, in parts. And it, when I worked at Dan's, I did none. I never had one. I mean, they always came in running. I mean, they're they're such a simplistic motor compared to like if you, let's say let's say you've got two racks, you've got an LB7 with a cab off, and you've got a six liter with a cab off, and you've got your boards on the frame, you know, with all your parts. You literally have half the parts on you know your boards from the six liter as you do the 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 duramax there's just a lot less in that rotating assembly um you know like even simple stuff like i mean they have hydraulic lifters in them so the valves are not the valve train is not adjustable there's just a lot of simple stuff to them um i mean when i first started doing them i had no experience in them and i just figured it out and i you know like i said i never had one back um, i think that's an anecdote not a standard but that's just if, my opinion yeah if I guess the way I look at it is this this guy doing the any budget build is a guy that reads a lot online, you know, spends his time on there. There are I'll endless, that. endless write-ups on forums on DIY guys doing this. I mean, shit, you see 75-year-old men doing their head gaskets on their six liters. It's not rocket science. Ford made it pretty easy to get the cab up on them. And once you have the cab up, I mean, they literally fall in and out of place. Fair enough. So, I mean, I, I, if it was a 6.4, that was why I strayed away because that is not a user-friendly truck at all. I mean, that needs, you know, even I dislike working on those trucks. Right. It's a pain. But when it comes to 6 liters, if you do a little bit of research before you tear into it and just look at, you know, some pictures of what you're getting into, 
analyze all the parts you've got sitting in front of you and you know you see how they mount to the truck where they go read the instructions for each part it's pretty simple i think it, it i would rate it as if a guy can do a set of lb7 injectors on his lb7 he's capable of doing six liter head gaskets what do you think, Chris? Do you think injectors are a simple job? Even I mean, how about how about we even make it simpler and say not on a Duramax and do do a simple job like injectors on a Cummins? <laughs> uh, where's it coming? Where's it coming from? <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't want to sit there and, and say uh, injector jobs are easy. Um, I definitely will say we saved the best for last with uh, <sighs> with uh, the, rotted ass twenty four valve rotted. with the budget build and everything like that. Unlike you two. Um, Working on one of these trucks, you can do at your house, in your garage, or in your gravel driveway if you want. Um, I've proven that. Um, you can you can definitely train a monkey. You can train a monkey to work on a Cummins. It's it's a proven fact this day and age. Um, so the truck that I chose for a budget build is a '98 and a half to a 2002 24 valve Cummins. Uh, when I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry, 44. Right, sorry. right. I did. Death codes. Um, so, I mean, uh, I've personally built one of these trucks on a budget and I've walked both a 600 horse, six liter and a 600 horse LB seven Duramax. Allegedly. Uh, it's, it's a proven fact. So I, I know that this is a, a build that can work. Um, I went a little on the high side for the truck. Um, I was finding them for three to four grand. If you want to get a nice one, you're going to pay five to 7,000 or 10 for a rotted one. I mean, you got to look, um, just like everything else. <laughs> Um, but I did find several, about six of them, and I have links saved, so I can provide that for everyone here. Um, you know, if we do an automatic, we're going to have to do a transmission on that truck. Uh, the transmission is going to run, depending on where you go, anywhere from four to five thousand um, dollars. Again, that will be a trans that harness six to seven hundred horse. Um, you know, eleven hundred thousand foot pounds of torque somewhere in that ballpark. Um, with that being said, we go right into the tuning. These trucks can't be tuned with EFI Live or any custom tunes at that point, so we'd go with an Edge comp box. Um, an Edge Insight CTS monitor is a, a gauge display for boost, exhaust gas, temps, things like that. Um, then we went with a set of injectors, so I went 120% over stock for the injectors. Uh, that's enough injector to support 700 horse plus. Um, a fast lift pump, we know what they cost, 611 bucks. Uh, then I went with a, uh, a BD Super B Special turbocharger. Uh, it's a 64 millimeter compressor wheel, 71 turbine. A set of uh, ARP 12 millimeter head studs uh, with a fresh head gasket. Um, if you take the head to a local machine shop, get it cleaned and decked, there's about 150, 200 bucks there. Um, and a fresh head gasket with a four inch cheap exhaust. You could pick them up for 300, 350 bucks. Um, I'm right around fourteen thousand dollars, so but, I still have. But you gave me ranges left. on everything. You didn't give me specific. So, so if you average so what it all I did, on the low I average side, everything middle. I went straight down the middle on all my averages for the trans and the truck. Okay, so I went straight down the middle. I was very conservative and I was very fair on everything that I did. This is a truck that you're going to buy something in the hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand mile range. This is something you're doing a fresh head gasket on where those are failure points. You're having the head cleaned and gone through. You're doing fresh injectors yourself. You're doing a fuel system yourself. You're putting a new turbocharger on it yourself. You're going through the trans yourself or, you know, having a shop do it. This is a truck that could potentially last another couple hundred thousand miles. Two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Four-wheel drive. So we're not budget doing a two-wheel drive. How many boosted launches is that front end going to hold? <laughs> I mean, it's a solid front axle. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many I, death wobbles before the truck yeah. ends up? In I the can ditch. just say, like you know, Pete can contest on this as well. I had a truck that was this setup, mm -hmm. and we had a buddy that had the same exact setup. You forgot that you valve had. springs. Uh, valve springs aren't going to be needed until you're doing twins or over fifty pounds of boost on a VP truck. So it's not something that's going to be needed right away. Or at all, unless you did more fuel or did an injection pump upgrade, because that's your limitation is the injection pump itself. Mm -hmm. This is a setup that will run circles on a Duramax that year. The truck's lighter. The torque curve's much different. Um, What's it run at the track? Give me I mean, a number. A truck like this, uh, Mark Downing, you know, you know him very well, I do. as do yeah. I. Uh, he, was in, he was in the 1190s on a cab and a half long box on 33-inch tires. Bullshit. You can go on comments for him on his build thread, and he can provide all the dyno sh or all the uh, track. Oh, oh, we'll be checking. I mean, you oh, can. We'll I'll get it. I'll get the link right now. I'm just saying that this is a setup that you're dealing with a motor that can potentially, the bottom end can handle a 1,000 horse. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the truck's mechanically sound and you take care of it, this thing will last, you know, 
three times longer than the LV7. Why'd you sell or your three VP then? pumps? Uh, Thank you. Because my uh, my boss propositioned me to buy a common rail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in regards to you know uh, Shibby's truck, you know, um, yeah, you might be going through uh, an injection pump. They do have a bad name in the industry, just like the six liters do. But if you have the proper supporting modifications, a lift pump, you really don't run into that issue. Um, you're probably going to go through multiple head gaskets, um, LB7, 6 liter, before you have to replace the injection pump on a, a VP truck. Um, and replacing the VP pump is is a driveway job. It's going to take you two to three hours, and any anyone can do it. It is very simple. You have a 17 millimeter. You have a, a couple other useful tools, and it's basically a walk in the park. What size injectors? One hundred and twenty percent over stock. Oh, okay. What I can also say too is, um, <laughs> yeah, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I cannot. What I was going to say is, everyone here. I know I have a limited supply of tools at my townhouse. Everyone here, if they go into their toolbox, they could probably grab all the tools needed to work on this truck and install all these parts. Pete. Building a trans. Um, you would have the trans built. So installing and uninstalling the trans along with everything else that I had listed, you could pretty much do it on any household toolkit. I guess I'll agree to disagree on that because if you have the resources to drop a trans in your driveway, you probably have the resources to jack your cab up a few feet off the ground and roll the chassis out from underneath it. I mean, if you're, if you're creative... And I'm not going to say you're I not mean, because I mean, I mean we've, we've, seen we've done it. Creative, we've, yes. we've pulled oh, yeah. cabs. We've pulled cabs. I, I've done cab swaps in my barn with four guys and we lifted it mm. and swapped oh, yeah. it body to body. It is possible if you're creative and you have a couple friends. And that's where this industry really ties everyone in. You have a couple friends, whether they own a Chevy, a Ford or a Dodge, you get them together. They lend a helping hand and it, you basically get the job job done a lot quicker. And, you know, our friend group, we've always done that. I hear you. But, you know, longevity wise, truck wise, you know. I don't think guys, any of you have owned a truck long enough to talk about longevity, to be honest with you. I don't I think any of us I just bought a six-liter, actually, so I'm doing my own little budget build. <laughs> I mean, every truck that I've built, they are still on the street. <laughs> so whether I was enjoying them or the next guy, so I don't really care. <laughs> Paul, what about you? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> no? Yeah, yeah most, most of the vehicles I've owned are still together. That are back in service. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. The All flatbed. Right. All right. Well, excellent. Should we just go around and do quick? Uh, you guys want to do closing comments, and then and then I will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm going to jump right on that one, Scott, and, and go first on this. I'm, I'm talking about three modifications and a and a tune. That's it. That that's all it takes to bring an LB7 Duramax in healthy condition Can up to 600 horse running under 13 seconds. Your Three truck modifications is your truck two. is also taking someone's word with mm. modifications that have already been done. Me and Pete are taking bone stock trucks and doing every modification ourselves. I mean, we're you're, you're looking, counting intake exhaust and lift pump. We're as talking these huge modifications. We're talking injectors, They're lift standard. pumps, turbochargers. Yes, we're talking there's everything. There's a lot of right because you factors. have to. I don't want to say that you're wrong or not because I'm not. But there's just like I know my build seems way over the top, but I literally built. You know, I mean, I spent hours on this. You know, thinking of this kid literally has 15 grand to spend on a truck. You know, I want to make it the most reliable truck that, you know, I mean, this truck's going to be turnkey. I mean, it's, you know, year round daily driver that, you know, he can drive every day of the week and <clears throat> all the bases, all the problematic areas within that specified engine have been right. covered. Whereas, and now Chris, I'm not going to knock on you either, but there's other areas that you guys left gray areas where next week after this $15,000 build occurred, if a VP 44 shit or a rear end shit, I mean, in the it, rear, the, the end, rear end, you know what? That's not necessarily yeah. the case, but I also had a thousand dollars left over and a VP pump cost 980 bucks. So there's my Truth. $20 Truth. left over. Like you had a couple cents Add in that shipping and you're going to be over budget though. True. I mean, I had five, seven, uh, most, left most over, mail orders are free shipping. Um, XDP alligator 980 free shipping. So what did the, um, what did you have for transmission? Transmission mods on that. And Suncoast we'll, GMAX 5.3 kit. And or, who is doing the build on that? Was that a self build? I mean, yeah. Okay, so not many guys do that. I mean, you pitch it on the on phone every day. You can go to your mom and pop trans shop nine out of ten times. They're spending money twice. So that is also another invalid part of the build. You're gonna pay. Like you're gonna pay five grand. You're gonna pay five grand for the build <clears throat> minimum. No, hold on. Hold doing on. the work yourself. Pump, installing. pump your brakes. No, pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Three okay. <laughs> okay, listen. Here, here's the thing I'm doing a Suncoast G Max 5 kit. If you're doing a budget build and you're doing all of this other work yourself, 
it is entirely possible to do it. A transmission. What work were you doing? There was only three parts. Yeah, that's I right. You swap lost. out. You swap out a turbo. Okay. I mean, like, like, and, and, and an LB seven turbo. I, I'll tell you what. That is a very intensive labor job. Intensive and, labor, but and, not and I will agree with you to an extent to back my cause that if a guy can build his own transmission. And I mean, I build Allison's for a living every day. Um, I mean, there's a lot of little tips and tricks that you learn doing it every day that make a build over what the guy that does it in his garage will. But to the guy that wants to build his own transmission, that's perfectly fine. But I think if your guy's capable of, of servicing his Allison and rebuilding it and installing a turbo on an LB7, um, that, you know, my guy can do head gaskets I'll on his that. truck. I'll concede that. On Chris's truck, I mean, you go on Cummins for him. I mean, yeehaw. I mean, those guys will do anything and everything to those trucks, and that's why they leak so much oil and I, I, I mean, that's Thank that's you. within reason. I, I don't know how many six liters I've seen on a tow truck after being, quote, unquote, bulletproofed. Uh, oh, absolutely. So, I, I will I back mean, that up. I will can, back that knock, up that. You, that can, you can knock the, my build. I can knock your guys' build. But mm -hmm. the one thing that you guys can't argue is how many million mile six liters have you seen roll through the shop? Oh, or in general? No, I'm you not, haven't. Dis I'm not disagreeing LB7s, with you at all. You know, maybe a handful at best. at best. We're going off of a platform that is not only a budget build, cannot <clears throat> harness double the power that I'm making on the truck, but it's going to be a long-term vehicle mm -hmm. if it's maintained well, that's what, just like anything else. That's what I did with mine too. You know, so and gaskets, I mean, anything like that. I mean, with what I have in the head gasket price, that would be a top engine gasket kit. Mm -hmm. To do an oil pan gasket, a tappet cover gasket, and the front um, timing cover gasket, you're adding another 60, 70 bucks there, you know, at best. Sure. So, I will right. I will agree that the Cummins stuff is probably the cheapest um, you By know, to work on. Yep, right. absolutely. Right. And, and they, they are can work on it. They're That's... probably dollar for dime, probably the the cheaper of the trucks to make power with, outside of the transmission, which is extremely expensive. I hundred percent agree. Cool. That I is agree that. what we'll do now. We'll just like to we'll go, Pete. We'll do closing, and then we'll take it over to Chris. Or keep keep it keep it going. It's going great. You guys are still. Maybe a little bit of cross meld going on. It feels good. I mean, it it's, yeah, it's, no, it should. You know, this was actually to me a lot of fun. Good. Like, no, I, yeah. I went into work early the past two days and just sat in my office, mm -hmm. you know, researching, looking on forums at what other guys were doing. And obviously, I had an idea of exactly what I wanted to do, but I wanted to guarantee that you know my numbers would be accurate. I mean, you found and, that score with the, with the base truck of thirty five hundred. That's what saved your build. Yeah, because absolutely. I feel like if no, you I mean, didn't this, if, find that if, score, it's not. Possible. I found a few others actually in the four to five thousand dollar range. You'd be surprised. You see them for that? But what I do. But yeah. what I like about this one is number one it's a it's a one ton so it's got the heavy duty front axle right um you know it's a solid truck it's got a simple electrical problem it's got a few new parts on it already so that's further benefit to the owner down the road less things he's got to replace um it's local it's not i mean not to knock yours but you know you got to figure in drive time and whatnot fuel costs on that i mean this thing is literally within an hour of us um you know it can be picked up i mean casey casey's a, a It'd be a long trip. I mean, eight hour drive. Yeah. Right? So, so it'd be a long trip, but, but <clears throat> I do have the money in the budget for it. Yeah, absolutely. It. So, I mean, and I just kind of wanted to utilize as much as I could of that money to build kind of, you know, I, diesel owners are all about bragging. I mean, it we've is. all been around it. I mean, you know, Chris's truck's a very simplistic build as is yours. Mine, yeah, there's way too much parts going on in it, but it's cool to say you have all that stuff. You know, I mean, you've got a lot of aftermarket parts in this. And the nice thing, too, is, you know, doing the valve springs, doing the push rods and stuff like that, um, you know, you're building a really good base down low. Six liter bottom ends, arguably, some guys say 650, some guys say 750, just like the LB7s. Right. Um, Obviously, it's not a dinosaur like a Cummins where you can throw 1,100 at it before it pops the rods out of the side of the drag strip um, <laughs> and bounces them off the tires very and specific. Mustangs next to you. That's very specific. <laughs> Those were common rails. <laughs> yeah. The earlier motors are much more stout. But, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to go over the top and make something cool that, you know, this guy could be proud of and show off. There's a lot of, um, you know, very good quality parts on here that, you know, not only are going to make the truck look nice under the hood, sound nice, drive nice, be fun. And, I mean, I just final calculations on it. That truck is anywhere in the range of 68 to 6,900 pounds dressed. He spent a little bit of time tearing away at it to set it up more for drag racing. You know, you can get it down to the 65, 66 range. Um, 
I I estimated low on my power, 600 to 625 at the rear tires, I guaranteed. Yeah. I know it will make more than that, but let's think, you know, respectively here, this guy may not have access to a good custom tuner or something. Right. Um, you know, I mean, you look online and in that setup without, you know, the push rods, the valve springs, the intake manifold and stuff, just the guy that literally slaps injectors, a pump and a turbo bolt on, on his six liter, you know, he's, he's running, you know, very low twelves. There was one guy that was a twelve seventeen with that setup and it was in a two wheel drive truck. Um, and obviously two wheel drives are a little more effort to drive, a lot, you know, with yeah. a, f a four wheel drive, you do have a little more added weight, but you also get off the line a hell of a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, if you know how to drive it and you know, this was, like I said, a DIY guy that was doing it. So nothing fancy for rear tires. He didn't have drag slicks on it. Okay. So, so you met your horsepower and your speed requirements. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Yep. And, and same thing with torque, um, six liters actually really don't move good air through the heads. That's why I put the ported intake manifold on to hopefully bring a little more bottom end to it because that's where they struggle um i will be over a thousand foot pounds of torque with that setup but it probably won't be you know in the 1150 to 12 range like i mean sure your truck would be you know in the 1100 range right. his truck would probably be you know obviously manual trucks you know if it was a manual truck that you pick it's going to make a you know a much broader torque curve yeah and i mean um, there's a lot more money into the budget there as well. Yep, but, exactly. Know, I mean, a good, time was a, the mind. big thing, you, you know, is a, a big clutch is, uh, you know, a good dual disc or triple disc setup is an expensive clutch. I mean, you'll have three grand into that. Mm. Um, but the only problem there is you put a manual in it and you better know how to shift that thing mm. quick. That's why if I, you're wanting to break 12s. That's why I chose the automatic, you know, and kind yep, of absolutely. to close out on mine, you know, um, the price point that I had on the truck was a mid range, you know, that five to seven. I calculated it at six um i have found trucks for three or four i have bought trucks for three or four that were mechanically sound so it is possible um but i wanted to be fair to anyone that is looking and to have a, a nice selection of vehicles you okay. know to go through fair you enough. know maybe get a little bit of a cleaner one again if i was the buyer and i had 15 grand i'm trying to build something that i'm going to keep for a while i want something that i'm going to take pride in um, just like Pete's, you know, $3,500 six liter, the exterior wasn't horrible on it. You know, the yeah, cab was, corners weren't intact. It wasn't rusty, coupled mm -hmm. dents. I mean, it was a, a fleet truck its whole life. Right. Um, but it was respectable if right. the guy got some more money down the road, threw some wheel tires on it. Yeah, and I mean, it'd be a Harley truck. Davidson headlights oh, yeah. to spruce her up. You know, and, um, <laughs> you know, with everything that I did in the build, you know, even with an injection pump to basically touch base on every fuel part of the fuel system the trans you know head gaskets everything this is a reliable truck at that power level you know 575 to 625 you know so um maybe a couple horsepower less than you guys um but this truck is going to be significantly lighter than your trucks um and i mean there's been multiple guys that run that quarter mile pass that have made those dyno numbers you know every truck's going to be a little different um but, I mean, this is going to be a, a stone-cold, reliable 600-plus horse truck that you could drive any time of the year. Um, you're not going to have to worry about head gaskets. It's done. Injectors, they're done. The transmission's been gone through. The injection pump is replaced. Um, you just put your own fuel system intake exhaust on here. You're not taking someone else's word for those components. And this is a truck that you purely can do yourself in a weekend or two with a couple buddies. It's been done. It's been proven. So... The most simple build out of the three, I'd say. I will say with Chris that, you know, we did the majority of those upgrades on his old truck. In, in a, a gravel shop. driveway. Yep, and in a gravel driveway and with very, very poor quality, minimal tools to mm -hmm. work with. Um, I guess I'll just qu throw a quick in on mine, too. Um, despite the uh, what everyone thinks, you don't have to pull the cab off a six liter to no, do head gaskets. You can do them in the truck. You can pull the motor. Um you know, there's, there's a lot of shops that will not do them pulling the cab. They, you know, swear by doing them in the truck. It's all personal preference at that point. I, I mean, I like to sit on the tire and torque heads. I don't like to be doing it from a topside creeper. But like I said, you know, it's all, you know, obviously doing it in the truck is going to make it much more user-friendly. And being mm -hmm. that this is a drop-in style setup, it's all achievable in the truck. Of course. I mean, <clears throat> that's what the whole goal here with... Mm -hmm. This was so. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I noticed nobody that nobody mentioned that really would have put it over the top is the black ice air fresheners that I usually oh, see. Oh shit! Yeah, you guys. I had. I had. Who your audience, man? 
Come well, on, you throw five of those, and that's guaranteed. I mean, that would have been can a I add stickers right to my. I have, I have right a little now. over nineteen dollars <laughs> left, so I could probably buy go. AutoZone out. Get it up, get it up. Well, all right. So I guess uh, taking all things into consideration, I've definitely come to a decision. Um, so with the Duramax the LB7, the issue we do run into is that it is a lot of it is. Um, you're kind of leaving it up to somebody else. You're buying somebody else. You might be buying somebody else's issues. You don't really know. I mean, same all. with all of them. Well, yeah, pretty, pretty sure. fair. Pretty fair to say. I mean, we're replacing everything on ours. Yeah, but so I mean, but hold hold on. He's hold going on. off the basis that there's just a wiring harness issue, and that's. True. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I'm buying the mechanically sound truck and replacing you're, everything. You're right. You're <laughs> assuming. You're assuming when you show up, yours doesn't have a death wobble. So, well, so there I mean, are there. I mean, are you're not. <laughs> you're picking out the truck. I mean, again, if you read through the ad, right, right, it's right, at right. a shop right now. Okay. And okay. it's been diagnosed as a bad wiring harness. You're right. No, no everybody exactly. tells the truth on Craigslist. They fact check. No, you're right. So That's will, why you would go right. with so cash. We all have a, Here, let me start by saying this: they're all great choices. Okay. Now pick the winner one. so we can go. I could see myself <laughs> driving all of these. Um, are you ready? Yeah. However. Well, However, I have to pick one. Right. I have to, unfortunately, and I am I am torn. Why? Because I like I like all you guys the same, and I I got to work with a couple of you, and actually I work with all you guys. So uh, here we go. You ready for this? Yeah, let's hear it. Here we go. All right. So the issues are with the Duramax. Duramax is is, is unfortunately not gonna gonna make it because it's the highest highest probability of someone else's issues. This shit's heard. rigged. See, there you go. Are you you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> this is your idea. <laughs> Uh, the Cummins. So the setup on the Cummins is the 120% over injectors with the 64 millimeter turbo. I see that thing rolling coal. It's not the same in the common rail setup. You okay. have to think that we're starting with a much smaller injector as a base. Mm-hmm. So the truck isn't going to be running as dirty as what you would think okay. running, you know, a hundred percent over injector on a common rail truck yep. and much more of the detuning to, to get the smoke out. Still of the it. smokiest yep. of the three. Yeah. That's, and, and that's my concern. Um, I don't necessarily and, and agree it, with that. It, and you know, you know how I feel about comments. It pains me to, to say that. I mean, that if you pick Pete right now, happen. I'm not showing up to work tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm holding you to that. <laughs> that's it. There you go. <laughs> So I am going to go with, actually, I am going to go with Pete. I feel like also um, just... Uh, six liter prevailing. Six liter prevailing. You know why? Because I think we need to get more Ford guys listening to this show. So I got to do this. Yes, yes. But I still think you guys did an awesome job. Thank you. I learned I learned a ton on this. You're tearing that up? I wanted that. I mean, I'm sorry. Here's what we'll do is we'll we that keep that. Show. What we're going to do is we're going to put the links for all of these items into the show notes Great as well. Idea. So people can... Actually, see. I have to save on my computer, so you have to have your computer. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, so people will be able to, you know, if if you heard something that you're interested in, and you're like, you know what, that comments, that is exactly what I want. I want that. I want to. I want to live Chris Emke's life. We're gonna so put links up. Join the club, and they'll do that. I brought six liter head studs with me. Yeah, as a prop. And I was hoping that we were going to be on camera. Well, the, but the thing not. is, is usually six liters in a in a couple hundred thousand mile, mm. you know, usage, it'll go through about three sets of those with <laughs> head gasket. So, I mean, that's great. You're a firm believer of yeah. those. I like it. Well, I mean, do you buy those in bulk? You could. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. We do a lot of them. There you go. You could. Yeah, Rich. Uh, yeah, we got our, our awesome producer, Rich, get a picture of. If you want to, you maybe maybe shake it in front of the mic so people can. That's, that's ARP. That's right there. That's that is a, the ARP that's sound. That's the sound of quality. <laughs> yes. That is the sound of quality. So we'll go ahead and just kind of close out. Um, i like to, yeah, special thanks to Pete for coming in. Chris for moving, I guess, what, 15 feet to your left yeah, I mean, from your a, desk. Thank long, you for doing that. It was a long trip. <laughs> that was awesome. And then, as always, uh, Paul. Absolutely. And, and Scott, I'd just like to uh, the same uh, say thank you for Pete and Chris for joining us today. Rich uh, for producing the episode, uh, Scott for hosting and mediating as much as we would let him. Uh, it's been a real blast, guys. Yeah, you guys are animals. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, cool. thanks for uh, inviting me down. I actually, I probably went a little overboard with it, but I had a blast. That was awesome. Well, there it is. The Ford 6.0 wins the budget build contest. Who would have thought? Um, I do want to say thank you very much to Pete Chibby of WC Fab, uh, Chris Emke of Duramax Tuner for coming out. Uh, we really appreciated your guys' attendance in this. That's the most fun I've had sober in <laughs> I don't even know how long. So that was a blast. This has been another production of the Diesel Performance Podcast. Thank you to our sponsors and producers. Yep. Be sure to visit us at dieselperformancepodcast.com. I'm Scott. And I'm Paul. Thank you for listening.
The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com, developer of performance engine and transmission calibrations for a wide variety of late model diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, John Deere, Jeep, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920.